Giants fans, these last few days have been rough sledding for a franchise that specializes in rugged losing. It's an all too familiar spiraling in a round porcelain object or an incredibly bumpy ATV ride in Cabo. It's unfortunate and hope seems lost before September 10th. That's not good. It's over, isn't it? Struggle is a compliment for how the quarterback played. The defensive run fits were unsound and highly questionable. And offseason acquisition Brian Burns was MIA for most of the game. He didn't fly like paper. He did not get high like planes. Nevertheless, I want to provide context to why we only saw one pressure for the Giants' $28.2 million a year pass rusher. Things were not heating up for him, but there was certainly a lot of attention on Burns. He felt like this. All eyes on me. All eyes on me. Still, we expect more from a player of his caliber. But I want to dive into the tape to see what the Minnesota Vikings did to slow Brian Burns down. My name is Nick Filato, and let's get into it. Brian Burns was on the field for 26 passing snaps. Six of them he dropped in the coverage, and he rushed the passer on 20 of them. And he saw a lot of attention. I mean, tight end chips, running back chips, so many chips, he might as well have went to Chili's because he was dealing with plays such as the one you are about to watch. You can see him out wide, slightly of the tight end, well wide of Brian O'Neill, the right tackle of the Minnesota Vikings. And he has to deal with this tight end who is just being a nuisance for Brian Burns. Look, Brian Burns thrives when he has a clear path up the pass rushing arc and he can win high side. But when he has to hesitate or has to deal with the tight end who's going to chip him, the tackle is in position as you can see, and that completely slows down and mitigates the quickness of Brian Burns. And this is something he dealt with most of the game. For me, it's incumbent on the New York Giants defenders, not named Dexter Lawrence, who's always going to feast, as you see on this play, split this double team. It's incumbent on those defenders to win their one-on-one -on -one matchups. And Kayvon Thibodeau cannot do that against Christian Darisol. As you can see on the right side of the screen, you see Kayvon Thibodeau attempt to get both hands on Christian Darisol, work to the outside, could not, it was mirrored very well. Darisol gets his hands on Thibodeau, and then Thibodeau can't really do much. He actually gets to the inside, it's, it's late, and Darisol falls down, which is something that you did not see most of the game. You saw a lot of Kayvon Thibodeau on the deck. But as you'll see through this video of these clips, these are all of Brian Burns' pass rushing reps. He has a lot of this. He just gets chipped at the line of scrimmage, pushed to the inside, and then just flushed to the inside. And this is the touchdown pass to Jalen Naylor. This was actually DJ Davidson's pressure, one of his two pressures. He's currently second on the team in pressures, which is not a great start for the New York Giants. Dexter Lawrence has six. DJ Davidson actually lands a really nice push-pull swim. Nice combination. But Brian Burns gets chipped by the tight end, and then Darius Hall can just wash him right down into Elijah Chapman, where he has two blockers to assist him. This is something Brian Burns dealt with a lot on Sunday. Again, another one has to shed him. By that point, it's a quick game. Sam Darnold hits his back foot. Ball's already out. But when you have four hands on you, when you have two sets of eyes impeding your path, the pass rushing arc, it's difficult to win. Even on plays like this, look, he has to run around this tight end now. And he gets around him. Now you have Christian Darisol. You can see how Brian Burns... Can't corner into the pocket, but look how low he gets. Like, this is like just impressive movement skills. And I'm not here to shower praise on the New York Giants. The Giants were inexcusably bad on Sunday, but not many players in the NFL move like this and can dip around punches like, like Brian Burns can. And you can just see how low his knees are, how low his hips are, how he can dip that inside shoulder around and away from contact, which reduces the surface area of his chest, which disallows tackles to get clean looks at his chest. And here he forces Christian Darisol to fully open up and basically chase him. And you can see how Darisol barely gets a hand on him. Brian Burns' knees are like scraping the turf. It's just he can't quite bend into the pocket. And Darnold gets rid of the football to a wide open CJ Ham who fumbles. And it's scooped up by Bobby Okereke. And even on plays like this one where the tight end does not contact him, he has to be cognizant of the tight end's presence. And you can see how he, he doesn't fire off the football like one would want. He has to step around the tight end. And at that point, Brian O'Neill frames his block optimally to not allow Brian Burns to win around the edge. And Brian O'Neill just eliminates Brian Burns. Good play by Dane Belton. Man, Sam Darnold goes through like a field and a half progressions here. Sam Darnold looks to his right, scans, 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 pump fakes, scans, 
tries to get the football into his receiver. Great play by Dane Belton, who only played nine snaps in this game because he's a sub package player. And when there's not a lot of passing downs, obvious passing downs, you can't really get into your exotic sub package. You can't get in your big dime. You can't get in your big nickel. Dane Belton doesn't see the field. And I think he's too good of a football player at this point relative to the rest of the secondary and some of these defensive pieces to not see the football field, but you need Tyler Newman and Jason Pinnock out there. So in order to get three safeties out there, you need third and six plus situations. And you know what? The giants were not in many of those here. Tight end does not make contact, but Brian Burns needs to run around him, go wide. Darisol, who is one of the better tackles in the national football league. And he really put that on display this Sunday against Thibodeau and Burns is able to just meet Burns and eliminate Burns. And this was that defensive pass interference call on Dory Jackson. In the red zone, Kevin O'Connell, instead of having Sam Darnold drop back when the Giants were going to pressure and bring a blitz, nice little rollout, simple, no one picks up. Ty Chandler, Darius Muisau gets sucked inside off the potential play action. It's a step behind Darius Muisau here, and it's away from Brian Burns. Go towards Ojolari, simple, easy completion. I have some running back chips as well. Running back doesn't chip him on this specific play, but he's right there to chip him. Brian O'Neill just does a really good job taking a slight vertical type of set and meeting Brian Burns up the arc. And this is just a design play to get Ty Chandler right past Brian Burns because the Giants were aggressively trying to win high side. That's what they're going to do with these wide nine rushers. And we've talked about this a lot at Big Blue View. Talked about this a lot throughout the offseason where you're going to try and rush high side. And it really screwed with the Giants' run fits a lot. I played a clip a little bit earlier in this video where you see Brian Burns fly around the edge and Aaron Jones just has open grass because the defensive tackle is not executing a lag technique and the linebackers weren't in position to fill that C gap. And if you abandon your run responsibility as an edge rusher by going high side like that, again, I don't know whose fault this is or what the defensive call is specifically. So I'm not saying it's Burns' fault per se. But you need to have contingency plans in place if you're going to aggressively rush up field and attack. And we know that's what Shane Bowen wants to do. He wants to attack. But the Giants didn't have any plan for that C-gap. It didn't seem like, or at least it wasn't executed well. So that's something that I'm hoping to see rectified in, uh, in week two. Here we see Burns have to deal with that chip. And they were doing this a lot with the running back as well. The running back would release to a side chip, prevent that high side rush. Brian Burns tries to spin back to the inside and Brian Burns, and you'll see this in a little bit. And this is a nice tackle by Bobby O'Karake in open space. And you'll see on this next play where Brian Burns adjusts to this chip. Every time he tries to go high, he sees Brian O'Neill. He's in a nice spot to mitigate the high side rush. And then Burns feels the chip. So right as the chip is initiated, he uses the momentum of the chip to assist in his spin to the inside. And one thing you could say about Brian Burns, this goes incomplete, by the way, one thing you could say about Brian Burns that's really impressive is he is wildly fluid and controlled as a mover. There are few pass rushers in the NFL, especially ones with his type of athletic ability and his burst and his flexibility, who, who can maintain balance like Brian Burns when he is spinning to the inside or to the outside, as we see on this play. This is an impressive play from Burns, but unfortunately it was one of his only really impressive wow type of plays and it didn't result in a sack. It resulted in one pressure. Now we're going to see Burns in a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations. Look, he tries to go inside, set Christian Darisol to the outside. Darisol's way too good for that, especially when the guard is not occupied. You see the guard. He's looking at Dexter Lawrence. We have Dexter Lawrence as a one shade to the opposite side and they're still paying attention to Dexter Lawrence. Bobby O'Karake bails into coverage. Brian Burns tries to crash a B gap. The guard is right there as well, and he gets shoved right into the guard. And that's just a tough assignment against Christian Darisaw. And I wish we saw more from Brian Burns, even though Kevin O'Connell and the Vikings paid such close attention to Burns and a lot of these key pivotal passing situations with a tight end and a running back. You still want a player getting paid as much as he's getting paid to win in some of these one-on-one -on -one matchups as you're going to see now. And here you can see he gets around the edge, but O'Neal's able to do just enough to force him to slip. And he loses his balance, falls at the top, and Sam Darnold doesn't even really need to step up into the pocket much. He gets a little, little check into the pocket. And you can see that's a nice pocket. Dexter Lawrence is crashing in there. And good on Darnold to get his eyes on the drag route. And this is an elite play by Andrew Phillips to set up the fourth down touchdown, unfortunately, to Justin Jefferson against Deontay Banks. But it's very hard for defensive players to keep up with receivers in man coverage on these horizontal crossing routes. And Andrew Phillips, that short area quickness, 
allows him to just drive right down on this and, and bring Jordan Addison to the deck. I believe that's Addison. Now you can see Christian Darius all kind of dominating Brian Burns. Burns tries to go with the long arm. Look, you, you can't really land much power moves against Christian Darius. Christian Darius all big boy. He's he's big. He's massive. He's very strong. I think he's one of the better tackles in the National Football League. You got to beat him with speed. And even then, he's he's really crisp on where he needs to be, when he needs to be there. He's much more explosive than he's probably given credit for. And the Giants drafted Kadarius Tony one pick before the Vikings drafted Christian Darisol. But we're not living in the past, ladies and gentlemen. We're living in the present because it's a totally fun place to be right now as a Giants fan. Anyways, yeah, Brian Burns loses this one. You can see, though, Dexter Lawrence, two guys on him. Rakim Nunez Rochez also has two guys on him. So the edge rushers are in one on one matchups. Now, Ujolari on this play, they had the tight end to the boundary side, had to deal with that tight end. And that's that long completion to Justin Jefferson against Banks and the safety. Here, Christian Darisol just runs into space for what was a design play on the other side that did not end up working out, as you can see. You have another lineman run in that direction too. And Brian Burns, look, if he went to the inside, it would have got a sack here. And I can understand where he was going. Let's let's play the entire play. People get upset when I rewind, and I completely understand why you would. It's kind of annoying, but I'm sorry. It's just how I watch film sometimes, see how it all materializes. Dexter Lawrence almost gets this sack, and Sam Darnold picks up a few yards here. But watch Brian Burns. Brian Burns... He's like, okay, Darisol's not there. This play's breaking down because Lawrence gets into the pocket. Great move by Sam Darnold to avoid Dexter Lawrence. And you can see Brian Burns. He's looping to the inside right now, but he goes outside, and that allows Sam Darnold to just pick up all those yards. And I think he goes outside because Rakeem Nunez Rochez, you can see he looks like he's about to go inside. His shoulders and his hips are starting to kind of point inside as he is prying that offensive lineman open. So Brian Burns saw that and believed that he needed to contain, which was his responsibility to begin with. So the middle is going to be occupied by Raheem Nunez Roaches. I think Brian Burns is processing this at the moment. So instead of going to the inside where he had a more direct path to Sam Darnold, I think he figured that Raheem Nunez Roaches had that covered when Dexter Lawrence was crashing into the pocket. This is all happening in milliseconds. So he goes outside and you can see how Sam Darnold is able to squeak away and pick up those yards. But this could have been an easy sack. If he just goes right to the left, instead, doesn't get the sack, and now everyone's calling calling him out, saying he's a bust of a signing, and I'm making this video. So a lot of Brian Burns, too, standing up in these spots, kind of as a more traditional linebacker. Now, I wouldn't say necessarily it was a tr traditional linebacker. A lot of it was him just coming off of the line of scrimmage. This is a little bit more of an exotic package where he is splitting the difference between Elijah Chapman and Raheem Nunez Rochez, who is acting as the end, and Kayvon Thibodeau is the wide defender. Now you have four guys center over, even though Dexter Lawrence is one shade towards Kayvon Thibodeau, and you have the two linebackers both directly. One is in the A gap, the other one is in the opposite B gap, away from the three technique and towards Kayvon Thibodeau. And then Burns is just tasked to go right at this guard, and you get these one-on-one -on -one matchups after that tight end releases. Dexter Lawrence gets the one-on-one -on -one matchup, and then Kayvon Thibodeau gets the one-on-one -on -one matchup. So you have a five-man rush at this moment, and Bobby Okereke is going to press the line of scrimmage, and he's responsible for Aaron Jones. And this is when the Giants ended up getting that sack. Now, this is more of just a product of Dexter Lawrence being very dominant and winning his one-on-one -on -one matchup against Ed Ingram, as we see. But the front dictated this as well. Because Brian Burns takes the guard. That forces Elijah Chapman to be accounted for by the center. Darisol is going to take Raheem Nunez Rochez. So now you have Raheem Nunez Rochez getting blocked by Darisol. You're not wasting Brian Burns, Kayvon Thibodeau, or Dexter Lawrence with Darisol, who is very good. This is early in the game, obviously. This is on the first drive when the Giants were able to get this sack. And then the next play, they got the forced fumble by Andrew Phillips. But you get the isolation. And this is something Shane Bowen's scheming in his mind probably all the time. I need to isolate 97 against one player. How can I do that? and not allocate six, seven guys to my blitz. You know, this is a five man blitz and he gets that. There's six or five guys in protection because Aaron Jones ends up leaving and Bobby O'Karake is there to account for that with man coverage on the back end. Dexter Lawrence gets the sack and we get to see Brian Burns standing up in that non-traditional edge rushing spot. Here, he's aligned with Kayvon Thibodeau on that same side with Dexter Lawrence as the nose and then Aziz Ojolari wide. 
Brian Burns, he ends up getting eliminated by two blockers here because CJ Ham helps out the guard. He can't get to the inside, and the blocking is very good. The pocket is wide open, and Sam Darnold finds his check down. Bobby Okereke makes a tackle. But again, have Ojolari on the field now next to Brian Burns with Kayvon Thibodeau on the outside. So we're getting a lot of different combinations. But this one is in sub packages because look who's out there. Dane Belton is out there. There was not a lot of snaps in the sub packages. I think we can see some unique sub package exotic looks from Shane Bowen crowding the line of scrimmage, three safeties. We just didn't really get to see it because the Giants were down most of the time. Maybe in week two, if the Giants can maintain a lead against a Washington team that's as abysmal as they are. And when you're in these sub packages, you're going to see more of this, which I love Dexter Lawrence as the nose, which he thrived. And he thrived in that role under Wink Martindale. And when you can use two edge rushers on one side, you're going to have a one-on-one matchup guaranteed with this protection. You have a one-on-one matchup with Dex in the center, one-on-one matchup with Burns in the guard, and the one-on-one matchup with Ojolari and Christian Darisol. Bobby Okereke ends up blitzing. Kayvon Thibodeau drops off. So it's a simulated pressure with one-on-one matchups to the right side. And you also have Ojolari drop off as well. So he rushes initially, eliminates Christian Darisol from the protection, then drops off, and it becomes a three-man rush. And a drop eight, even though it's delayed. And this is when Jason Pinnock is able to cover the ground and get that PBU. And it's just the sheer strength of Dexter Lawrence, man. It's just unfair for a lot of these centers. Just push right back into the lap of Sam Darnold. Gets washed inside on this play. Brian Burns, check down, unfortunate. But if we look at it again, it is who? The three edge rushers and Dexter Lawrence. So in these sub packages, when it's passing downs, the Giants know it's like Elijah Chapman, Keen Nunez Roches, those aren't necessarily the guys, you know? We got to get these three pass rushers out there. We just didn't get to see it too often. Ujolari played 24 snaps. Nine of them, I think, were pass rushing reps. So it's not like it, it happened too frequently. But you get the one-on-one matchups with both those edge rushers to the right side of your screen, Dexter Lawrence, and then Ujolari. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. If the Giants can never, you know, score points on offense and force third and long situations, that'd be lovely. Here, Burns looks like he could have gotten a pressure. He wasn't credited according to pro football focus. Maybe it's because this play ended up being negated by a holding penalty. So for what it's worth, he gets a pressure. He's in on Sam Darnold and forces the little screen check down. But he's also going up against 84, Josh Oliver, who's not even there blocking tight end. I mean, I don't think he's a terrible blocking tight end, but it's not Johnny Mutt, who the Vikings absolutely love. And I don't even think this was a holding on Christian Darisol. I think he just dominated Cave on Thibodeau so bad that that umpire or that ref thought it was a hold, which is not a good sign. And that happened a few times in this game. Not the flag for Darisol, but just Cave on Thibodeau losing very, very badly. And again, if we're going to see so many eyeballs on Brian Burns, if we're going to see the tight end, if we're going to see the running back chip, you have to have Cave on Thibodeau step up and seize those one-on-one matchups and, and win and win those. Because if he doesn't, the protection isn't going to be shaded away from Brian Burns. Dexter Lawrence is always going to get his, but Cave on Thibodeau was a fifth overall pick. He needs to start playing like it, and he really hasn't in his career. Here's just another pass rushing rep. It's such a quick pass. It's against tight end, though, but it's such a quick pass that it, Brian Burns couldn't really do much. Touchdown against Deontay Banks. And those were all of... Brian Burns is pass rushing reps. There were six snaps where he dropped into coverage into these curl flat zones. as was a lot of them middle hook, maybe one of them as well. I wish the tape was a little bit more positive that we could break down here. I wanted to highlight that Brian Burns did receive a lot of attention. That doesn't excuse the lack of production, the dearth in his statistics that we all expect with the contract that he has, but it is a reality that he had to deal with. I also believe the game script did not help this pass rushing crew out. The Giants only had 11 pressures. Dexter Lawrence had more than half of them. He had six of them. DJ Davidson had two, and then everybody else had one. And by everybody else, I mean like Kayvon, Brian Burns, and I think Elijah Chapman maybe. I I don't have it in front of me. But either way, regardless, the pass rush I think is going to be better in better game scripts and better environments. It was just a really unfortunate start to the season once again. And I'm not overly worried about Brian Burns as a pass rusher. I am hoping, though, that Kayvon Thibodeau can step up. I'm hoping that 
the Giants can find another pass rusher, not named Dexter Lawrence from the interior, so they don't have to always rely on Aziz Ojolari because there's going to be some third and four where that's a passing situation. It could be a running situation, though, too. And the Giants, again, man, they need to fix these run fits. That's something I'm going to be paying close attention to against the Washington Commanders next week. But I hope you guys enjoyed this brief little video on, on Brian Burns and, and how – Kevin O'Connell and the Vikings were accounting for his skill set and how they tried to slow him down and successfully did so. So please, if you guys like this, like, subscribe, comment, and hopefully the Giants can turn this ship around because it's already not on track. It's not on course and we're hardly into the season. But I'm Nick Filato signing off. Take care of each other and have a lovely day.